Michigan has an interim coach, Steve Fisher. 19 days ago, got word after Bill Frieder took the job at Arizona State. Well, he got it when Bo Schembechler moved in front of the microphone in Ann Arbor and made this announcement. I don't want uh, somebody from Arizona State coaching the Michigan team. And uh, I want that understood. The Michigan man is going to coach Michigan. And, uh, so that's the way it will be. And what a Michigan man he has become. Five straight wins, only one away from a national title. And moments ago, this warm embrace in the stands right behind him. Coach Fisher's wife, Angie, and Janice Frieder, the wife of Bill. Bill not here in the arena tonight, we understand, but certainly watching the Wolverines back on television. That was a marvelous scene. It was, Grant. They're the first people that get into heaven, coaches' wives. It's a very, very tough job. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington for tonight's national championship game between the Michigan Wolverines and the Seton Hall Pirates. And now let's meet the starting lineups for Michigan at forward. A 6'7 senior from Flint, Michigan, number 41, Glenn Rice. For Seton Hall at forward, a 6'7 junior from Melbourne, Australia, number 10, Andrew Gage. For Michigan at forward, a 6'9 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 35, Loy Vaught. For Seton Hall at forward, a 6'8 senior from New York, New York, number 24, Daryl Walker. For Michigan at center, a 6'10 junior from Romulus, Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. For Seton Hall at center, a 6'8 senior from Canobinus, Puerto Rico, number 25, Ramon Ramos. For Michigan at guard, a 6'2 junior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 21, Ramil Robinson. For Seton Hall at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 15, Gerald Green. For Michigan at guard, a 6'7 senior from Rosemont, Illinois, number 20, Mike Griffin. For Seton Hall at guard, a 6'3 senior from the Bronx, New York, number 23, John Morton. And introducing the head coaches. For Michigan in his first season, Steve Fisher. For Seton Hall in his seventh season, P.J. Carlesimo. Best of New York against the best of Boston. Ramos partially blocked on the inside. And Bott yanks it away, and here's Ramil Robinson again. There are those bangers on the inside. Mills with about two inches on Ramos. Bad shot, and he makes it anyway, huh? P.J. Carlissimo has one Achilles heel in the Big East, and that is Syracuse. And there are any number of similarities between Michigan and Syracuse. Good point guard, tall men on the inside, and that one banged in by Vaught. And Michigan moves out to a 6-3 lead and looks good doing it, Billy. Uh, has not played well in the NCAA tournament compared to regular season, but you can expect a big game from him tonight. Morton's three. Three point basketball. How about the wear and tear physically by the time you get to the last 10 minutes? Well, that's what's been uh, Seton Hall's big advantage against other clubs, but Michigan can come back in with Hughes to play him for a while. And Walker on a slick turnaround, his first field goal. Walker, Green, and Morton. The two guards have both hit threes, and Seton Hall up 8-6 as a result of that. Now Rice maneuvering, and Gaze right with him. And Rice able to jump up over him, and that's his second field goal. Rookie, see if he tries to pick him off inside. There he goes. Gaze with the three, rims out. Mills tracks it down, and again gets it into Robinson's hands. He pulls up on Green and hits the two. Michigan up as the result of that field goal. Off to Gaze on a cut off his foot and over to Higgins. Here comes Robinson again, three on one. Bounce pass, Rice. Robinson here with one of his three assists. Well, we said the sharpest point, meaning the point guards, which one would be the key? So far, Ramil Robinson has pulled up and taken the jumper. There, Seton Hall, three of ten. They've taken seven from three-point land, but Ramos with a layup. Started, that'll give Gaze an opportunity to rest a little bit defensively. 
He'll chase Higgins now. And he's out on him. They get into Mills, turn around in the paint, rimmed out, and Robinson in low puts it back. So Ramil Robinson is off to a fabulous start as the leader here of the Wolverines. Robinson has had the advantage of Green throughout those early contests. They want that ball in Ramil's hands. He'll dump it into Hughes. Gets the roll. Morton on the floor with Green. Cooper is still out there. Avent on the inside with Walker. Higgins has range in that jumper. Cooper better get out on him a little further. Mills backed his way in. Offensive rebound. And a good put back by Vaughn with the coach's wife cheering on that move. And the lead four again. 18-14 Michigan. Third team uh, all Big Ten player. Vaughn has been solid. There's Higgins on the rebound. Higgins at six foot nine. You don't realize how tall this Michigan club is on the floor. 6'10, 6'9, 6'8. Griffin at about six, five and a half. Steps out. Griffin. Inside now to Ramil Robinson, who posts up his man. That's six points for the point guard. Now here's where Griffin is really valuable, although he doesn't score a lot. He's got a good passing angle being that tall out in the top of the key. Amen. Jump pass over to the side, and it's Walker. Vermeil Robinson looking a little tired right now. Trying to, he's matched up with Cooper in this lineup, so Cooper can post him down low. Morton. Michigan got caught in a bad mix matchup there. Mills taking Avent on the inside. Now it is Morton running underneath with Rice, who has returned, chasing him. Real good upper body defense on the inside by Hughes and Mills, not giving Seton Hall. There's the quickness by Morton. And Morton, what he did against that team, Mike Krzyzewski, when he helped lead Seton Hall from behind to a victory in the semifinal has tied it up here at 20. Not many people expected him to do much. They were picked seventh in their own conference preseason. There again, Morton has taken Rice. Green's three, the tenth one that they have attempted, and his second successful one here, putting Seton Hall ahead 23-20, with Seton Hall up 23-20, 6.52 to go. And now it is Morton with the three. That's 12 unanswered points by the Seton Hall Pirates. They lead it 26 to 20. Into Rice, who snaps it off the turnaround, and he was fouled by Gaze. That's Gaze's first personal. Gaze, their star to return as a player, and so Dad said, no, -uh, he's not coming back for a senior year. He's coming back to play for me. Uh, Brent, I have a little bit of problem with that. Yeah, there'd be some Soviets there who would be. Well, the Yugoslavians have an, op an, uh, an awful lot of outstanding, young, talented players, and bring a player in for one year, use them to have a quality team, and send them back home. Good D. Mills jumping out over to Robinson. Caleb on the right, back to Vaught, trailing in Avent, coming down on the inside, and there's a blocking foul, and they're pointing at Wigginton to get in against him. Took away an easy two. Robinson into the paint. That's eight points. I don't know if there's a guard in the country that takes it to the hole any better than Ramil. Both teams playing great man-to-man -man defense on the inside. Wigginton inside with the bigger fella. The smallest man in Division 1A, 5-4, Pookie Wigginton took it on the inside and hit the field goal, and the crowd loved that one. Coming down the line now, and Robinson with his 10th point of the evening. Down by two, they can tie or go ahead this trip. So it seems to me that Ramil getting a little tired here instead of really pushing the ball down the floor like he normally does, he's kind of walking it. Rice bangs it in, and that was a two. That's 10 points for the two-time Big Ten scoring champion. Here's one of the trends to watch for. Seton Hall has brought its game to the outside against the taller Wolverines. This time, they punch it into Ramos. 
But for the year, they have averaged only 14 three-point attempts a game. Tonight, Seton Hall has already hoisted up 12 in the first half. They lead it 30-28. Great sign for P.J. to get Ramos off the bench and immediately score from the inside. Here's Rice responding with a three, and he has 13. Ramos with his man going down, couldn't put it away, and it's Robinson three on two to Caleb. Nice. He gives it back to Higgins. Beautiful look away pass both by Caleb and Robinson. Good teamwork. Particularly with Griffith out of the game. Here's Robinson in low again, drawing the foul from Gaze. And there's a smiling Michigan athletic director and head football coach, Bo Schimbeckler. For Michigan shooting two, Ramil Robinson. Neil born in Jamaica. Moved to Boston when he was six. That's a uh, marvelous story about him. He was born and abandoned by his mother three years after they moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts. Slept in the hallways of a school, spent nights with friends' families before being adopted. And the folks who adopted him are here tonight watching Ramil Robinson turn in a spectacular first half. No misses. And someone donated the money to get the family out here for this game, and it is truly a very warm story here tonight. Now it's eight. Robinson is fouled by Green, his second personal. But a very good time to press now if you're Michigan, because you want to make Seton Hall use up as much of this six seconds getting the ball up the floor as possible. Hurry to get off a shot. Green will bring it all the way down. Missing, and that'll end the first half. Green punches in now to Walker, who goes to work, and it's blocked by Mills. And there is Ramil Robinson. So with a five point lead, which is big in a championship game. Now a block, and Michigan comes out with its first opportunity. Everything going the Wolverines' way right now. Rice missing on the three. Morton reaching in on but fouled in. Now, one of the things that both of these teams do so well is come over from the weak side to help out whenever the ball goes in the post. And you can see Mills coming over to help out when he realized that Vaught was beat on the inside by Walker. A great block and turned it right into offense for Michigan. No spacing there to get the ball to Mills. Mills hits the turnaround. And it's 39-32, a seven-point lead, the biggest of the night for the Wolverines. That, just, oh, that foul was on Vaught. They try to get it in low to Ramos, who comes up, and this time... He gets it put down, and he'll move to the free throw line after Mills picks up his second. Michigan's turn. Now they've got Cooper on Rice. Rice steps out with Cooper chasing him, and that's a two-point field goal. Fifteen points for Glenn Rice. Green goes all the way, comes up short, run down in the corner by Rice, sends it deep to Robinson. Here's Mills over to Vaught, and a beautiful pass from Mills, who threw a blind pass on Saturday to Sean Higgins. So Mills continues to play with some enthusiasm. They wanted Walker, they've turned it over, Vaught to Griffin, and here's Robinson, and the Wolverines suddenly in control. Glenn Rice turns around, makes the perfect pass. It had to go up court so Robinson could get it. And there's the great pass by Mills. Not only the great pass, but how about the way he stepped off to the right-hand side to make sure the charge could not be called. Smart play by Mills. And the third personal on Gaze as Robinson will shoot two. Ramil, a third-team All-Big Tenor this year, sure to be a preseason All-American type candidate next year. Tonight's championship game. Now Green, who is trying to find daylight against him, slips inside this time and comes up with a field goal. His first of the second half. They're going to need it as Vaught steps out and bangs it home, and it's now eight for Loy Vaught. 
Griffin is getting that hand at six foot six right up in Gaze's face. Rice is three. What a stroke that is. 18 for the evening. That'll take that smile out of your face. Mills with a pick and a hard one on Green, allowing Robinson to bring it up now to the attack for Michigan. Oh. And it takes off jams and Ramil Robinson. Event off the miss by Higgins. And Green gets it to Walker with a nice pass. Green starting to pick up the tempo a little bit, just exactly what he did against Duke to bring Seton Hall back. I like the gamble by Steve Fisher, though, to take Robinson out. But right away, they get a field goal, and how long can they afford to rest Ramil Robinson? Well, that becomes a factor now. It's 51-43. Rice on a cut. Keeps going. No traveling called on that move, and 20 points for Glenn Rice. Electing not to go through with it. And it'll be Morton who'll step oh, up. Oh, and Abit underneath. God. Got a roll that time. And that's their first field goal down on the inside off the bench. Well, they got the 10 minute run to go. Higgins hoists a three. Big field goal for the Wolverines. Seton Hall was closing back in when Higgins hit that three near the nine and a half minute mark. Well, Ramos, Ramos probably saying that play is illegal down in Puerto Rico on our national team because in the international ball, you can't throw it off a man back out of bounds. Rice got a, hits the three. Walker gave him just a hair room. That's all he needs. So the inability to hold on to the ball underneath the basket really cost Seton Hall. Now it's Walker who comes back. He has scored eight points, and it's still an eight-point lead by Michigan. Three now with 7.42. They wanted to the defense. Ramos off with it, and Morton coming back in the middle now. Morton will try to go all the way for the layup, and he does, and the Hall back in the middle of it. And he had a sensation in the first half, and they have been out of sync. Cooper now with the jump shot. Olsey is there with the rebound. Cooper defended him with his legs that time just by keeping him away. Morton now looks quick. Morton through the lane, hits the field goal. Steve Fisher's got to be thinking timeout to stop this move. Robinson's open, and coming over was Olsey. He took a good foul. He didn't let him squeeze the trigger. Only a 64% free throw shooter. Higgins replaces Griffin. Now that move gives Michigan a little more firepower. Especially those of you who followed Michigan all year know that the young man sometimes can get a little out of control, but he certainly was the right man in the right spot on Saturday afternoon. So they have perhaps their best scoring lineup on the floor right now. They're up by four. They were down a dozen to Michigan. They're back to within two. Wolverines bring it down. It's not quite as quick going around Green right now as he was in the first half. Rice oh, yes. hits a three. 26 points for the magnificent scoring machine. Each of the big men out here to handle the ball and then send them back down low on the exchange. Mills works his way in now for the good shot. Beautiful play by the Wolverines. I'll help him. Oh. Now he gets to the inside. Lost control. Nice save. Ball ball. Here's Morton for a breakout. That was a big moment in this game. That has pulled Seton Hall back to within three points. The B. He's got a hand on it. Seton Hall's ball. Three on two now. Green off to the side. Morton hits it again. And Seton Hall back to within one in two and a half minutes. Well, what is save? Michigan walking down the floor with three players. What saved Michigan at this point? Steve Fisher up screaming at his players. Let's start moving. What saved them has been the three-point shot. And there's another one off into Morton's hands. Seton Hall brings Morton, who's been the scoring sensation, up with the layup. Points in the second half for John Morton. The hole's ahead. Tightening up on Ramil Robinson. Good step out by Morton to prevent. Five 
five seconds. It goes over to the hall. That was Morton that made the play. Rice had come off the double screen, and Morton stepped out to prevent that pass and created the five-second call. Morton cut off by Mills, so he'll send it back deep to Green. You know, when you have a good free throw shooting team, you don't mind hanging on to the ball and using some clock. Because even if you go to the line, you're in good shape. Walker putting it down, and the foul is called. And that on thought is number two. Michigan's over the limit. three of their last four possessions. They trail it by two. Rice with the three. Michigan leads on Rice's three-point shot. 29 for the game. Morton, he's alone as Rice slipped and he's short. Michigan's ball underneath. They've got to give it up. There's, three, there's a differential of about six seconds on the clock, so they can't hold it to the end. But if successful, they can make it tough. They can move up by three, and Seton Hall flashes out with the foul. That was Morton's third. Got a chance to hit two, put them up three. They still got a three to tie it, so not out of the woods even if he makes both. The front end makes it a two-point lead for Fisher. They've got 34 seconds, so plenty of time left on the clock to do a lot of things. Good touch. It's a three-point lead, 34 seconds. Here comes Seton Hall. Think about Gaze right now for the three. And Morton with the hot hand. He'll jack up the three. And oh, it. 24 seconds. Time for Michigan. Now Ramil Robinson brings it down, and Fisher will use a timeout. Now he's with Green all alone. Very dangerous play here. They get it into Robinson's hand. Bringing it down, the final seconds ticking away. Might as well clear out for him and let him take his man. They're going to look for Rice, too, if he can flash. He's going to go to the other side. He comes out high. He's got Gaze on him. Gaze with him. Rice shoots. Rice doesn't get the roll. We're going to go to overtime. First time since 63 when Loyola and Cincinnati went OT. They win it. They win it. Now they have a jump ball to start the five-minute overtime. Higgins controls for Michigan. Michigan gets one timeout. They had none, and Seton Hall three. They hit Rice on the inside, and Michigan goes up by two. Rice watching him. A little clear out for Morton. Takes it into the paint, not there. He and Ramos play catch. Now with the shot clock running down, Gaze bangs in a three, his first field goal of the game, and it came in overtime. Robinson hits Hughes, who comes out. Higgins here. Rice and Mills along with Robinson. Higgins puts the Wolverines back ahead. You know, Higgins was a guy that looked like he was going to shoot him out of the game, and now he's come back into two big fouls and then that shot. Very conscious of Morton. They get it out to Green, missing the three. Walker goes out after it. Great offensive rebounder, and it's goaltending. Put it down. Walker got by with a push on that initial rebound. We might get a chance to see it. There's his turn on the inside and the goal 10, second one to the, in the game for Michigan. Our 12th lead change. We had 33 lead changes between Michigan and Illinois. 3-12 left in overtime. Seton Hall up by a point. Steal by Green. Got more. He'll bring it down with Robinson. Morton was open. He didn't see him all the way. And Mills with a great defensive effort that time. Now it's two on two. Gaze stayed back with Walker. And as Higgins comes through, he drew the foul. For Sean Higgins. It's hard to sense right now which is the fresher team. Walker looks fresh. Morton looks fresh. Ramos not quite as fresh uh, for Seton Hall. Now he nails that one. He's already dropped in a field goal in overtime. 
This can put Michigan ahead. Doesn't get the roll. Score is tied at 76. See if P.J. goes to that double high now and going to force Michigan to chase. Morton and got another one. 35 points. And Morton has led the way. 79-76. Seton Hall leading it. And that's the time they have left. Morton gets inside. Won't fall. And Rice off with the rebound. Grant Robinson only has one field goal in the second half. He has not been penetrating like he did in the first half. He's given the ball up. Rice open on the three, and this time it won't fall, but Higgins has got it back. Missing, and it is rebounded by Seton Hall, and then they foul, and it'll go against Robinson at the 117 mark, and Billy Sean Higgins continuing to fire away. Ramil in on the inside. Remember that reverse yeah. jam we had, that replay? But he also, Brent, may be very, very tired after that Illinois game because he hasn't been the same in the second half. Good pressure by Green on him. Here he comes. Big Let's see if he takes a free throw. throw. Robinson looking. Green is there, and he will not give him an alley. Good defense by Green. Higgins gives it up to Rice. Down toward a minute. Michigan trailing it by three. Mills backs his way in. Now the turnaround, and it's a one-point game. And the clock gives Michigan one more chance because we're down, down to 41 on the shot clock and more time remaining in the game clock. Now, Seton Hall needs something this trip. Missed an important front end. Weren't able to get it down the last time before that. And Michigan will look for that defensive stop. The hot hand holding the ball, John Morton. And he'll take Rice down on the inside. Now, down toward five seconds on the shot clock. Seton Hall will have to hurry. Morton will go one on one, up high, short. Michigan's ball. They've got an opportunity here now to win it. They've got to hurry. Five seconds. Robinson goes in. Foul, foul call with three seconds. A foul against Seton Hall with three seconds. Neil Robinson, the point guard. And they're the parents who raised him in Cambridge, Massachusetts. With an opportunity to put Michigan ahead. It's a one and one. He'll shoot the front end right here and get a second free throw if successful. Griffin, who was a defensive standout, with a word of encouragement for his teammate. Now you see Steve Fisher wanting all his men off the lane. P.J., on the other hand, is going to want the ball up to half court and call a timeout. He only has three seconds, though, Billy. He might have done something in that timeout before nope. so that they go with a long pass here. Let's see what happens on the free throw. Michigan leads it. Come. Really like that strategy, Brent. Steve, Steve Fisher doing all the right things in this particular ball game. Seagan Mills makes it tough to throw the line drive pass. Starts win touch. Long pass. Walker and Green battle. Walker fires up. It's over. Michigan has won a national championship. And for the third time in the last eight games, it has been decided by one point. The Wolverines win an NCAA title over Seton Hall, a tough opponent all the way.
with Coach Fisher and a happy group of Wolverines. Uh, Coach, just a tremendous emotional game tonight. I know you were on a roller coaster all night long. Your thoughts now about what you've been through with this group of athletes. I am the happiest man alive right now, Brent. I'm just so proud of every one of them. And Ramil, Ramil is such a gutsy kid. And you can go back to Wisconsin when he missed two free throws with eight seconds to go one point behind. He came out after that for like two weeks straight and shot 100 every night. He told me, he said, Coach, Coach, I'm going to make those the next time. I rebounded for him. I rebounded. You went on that line. It was all there. I saw after you hit that first one, you turned, threw that fist up in the air. What did it feel like to know that maybe you had won that national crown? Well, that's wonderful. Um, no one's time to let the team down because I missed two, uh, a one-on-one. I just didn't want to let them down this time. They played a great Super game, though. Job. Glenn Rice, in the first half, you were penetrating an awful lot down into the hoop. The second half, you weren't. Were you kind of worn out? No, I wasn't worn out. No, I figured I was taking the game too much to myself, and I wanted to get the other guys into the game. And uh, you know, I, I knew I couldn't win just by shooting the ball all the time. You, know, you had to get the other guys into the game. We got some of the game, particularly Glenn Rice. Coach, on the last time out, you elected to go back with Mills to pressure Ramos, why did you make the change? Well, we wanted a big guy up on the ball. We we said, let's come out, see what they're set in. Terry, you go back to midcourt like we're not going to guard the ball, but we intended to guard the ball all along. Coach Fisher, I think we'll be able to replace that interim tag sometime soon. Let's go here from Leslie Fisher and Bo Schimbeckler. Bo, it's an emotional moment, but what are your plans for the head job at Michigan? Well, we'll go back, and uh, I think we ought to interview Steve Fisher, and uh, we'll certainly do that. It's a great day for Michigan, our first national championship, and uh, the team was magnificent. Steve Fisher did a great job. That's great. Congratulations to you and to Steve Fisher. Back to you. Thank you. All right, Leslie Visser, the decade of the 80s has been a decade of championship classics. No better way to close out the 80s in this overtime classic tonight at the Kingdom. Back in a moment. Your attention, please, to present the championship awards tonight, the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Cedric Dempsey. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee, I am privileged to present the 1989 championship trophy to the University of Michigan and the head coach, Steve Fisher. I proudly accept this championship trophy on behalf of these 15 players and on our, our entire fans and everybody back in Ann Arbor in the state of Michigan. Thank you very much. Steve Fisher becomes the most famous fill-in from the University of Michigan since Gerald Ford. We'll be back right after this.